I've been wanting to take y'all out to the garden. It's looking beautiful, y'all. And we're at that time of the year where the garden's gonna be doing a lot of changes quickly. Come see this. Lily's forget-me-nots are blooming, and oh my goodness, they're just the cutest things. Maro, you stay with me. Come on. Uh-uh. Sit. Good girl. You know, I've never seen forget-me-nots in person. I've only seen them in pictures, but they are just lovely. Check them out. Everything right now has just a little light dusting of pollen on it. <laughs> All right, Marl, why don't you come with me? Let's go to the garden. <laughs> so if you see, the arugula right now is in full bloom. I'm just gonna leave my sweater over here. The funny thing about these flowers, I don't particularly like arugula. I decided it's not my thing. The flavor is a bit too strong. And I was very excited to see what the flowers looked like because I had never seen them before. And when they first started to open up, I was a little bit disappointed. Just was expecting a little bit more maybe. But as they all started to bloom and I started to look real close, they have a very unique design on their petals. And I just thought they were exquisite and beautiful in their own way. Now that they're all blooming together, even though I might not like the taste of arugula, I think I'm going to grow them again next fall. And all of the borage is in full bloom as well. All the borage plants that you see here on my garden, they all receded from last year's borage. So they're quite large. This one, not so much. The white, the white ones get larger than the blue. But aren't they just lovely? The bees have been all over them too. They are busy. I can get lost out here looking at all the wildlife, you guys. There was a lovely little honeybee over there on the bolted broccoli flowers. Just absolutely full of pollen. <laughs> and his little face was also just covered. He was the cutest thing. They're so happy. But yes, all the borage is just doing fabulous. I already did put out more borage as well. They're very tiny right now. So they'll start taking off in a little bit, but at least we have these for right now that we're enjoying. And the pollinators are enjoying them. You see, I have these broccolis that just have tons of foliage and I'm like, why are they not putting out any broccoli? <laughs> They're huge, look at them. Finally, some of these are putting out little broccoli heads. But, they're already bolting. <laughs> I wish I knew what variety this was. I could probably find a marking somewhere if I really looked hard. But the foliage is beautiful and I'm sure you could just eat the foliage. It looks very similar to, say, collard greens. Nothing will go to waste out here. We'll either eat it or it will go to the chickens. If you're out here, I've got all the cilantro and I've been picking quite a bit. In fact, I'm gonna make more tacos for dinner. So I'll be picking some more of the cilantro for that. And the garlic is just looking beautiful, you guys. You see how I, I just mix it all in. I also have some onions in here as well with the garlic. And eventually, you know, we'll be putting the tomatoes out, which I'm gonna show y'all soon we're gonna go check out the greenhouse they're looking beautiful eventually of course the cilantro will bolt and I'll just let it do its thing I'll probably clear out certain sections so that I have room to put my tomatoes and other things that I'm putting out here in fact Lily helped me we already put out a bunch of marigolds sunflowers and then that borage but this garlic will stay here and will continue to grow. I like to do this because I only have so much space and I find that the garlic and onions grow just fine. All of my tomatoes and squashes and anything else that I'll be putting out here. And then of course, come September, that's when we harvest our garlic. But it's looking beautiful. I've been just constantly putting out that chicken bedding when I clean out the chicken house and putting it down thick on each mound in the soil 
The soil is looking great. But y'all, this is my favorite row. This row to me feels very magical. You've got the hairy veg who's going. Look at this. Here's all my silly purple broccoli that's just bolting. Mixed in with cilantro, I've got all the garlics and onions. The violas are taking off, look at them. Bolted broccoli here. This is some of that red sale lettuce along with the mock strawberry here. Look at these cabbages. They're just beautiful. And of course, they all have a bit of a dusting of pollen on them. They are all just looking beautiful, guys. Look at this. And the hairy vetch is starting to bloom. Aren't those just beautiful? I love hairy vetch. I really do. And in fact, this year, y'all, I'm going to be doing something a little different. Last year on one of my main large arch, we'll go over there in a minute, the hairy vetch was just really taking off. It was fully blooming and I had to take it, I had to take it down because I was going to be putting in my squashes that were going to be climbing there. This year I decided I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let it grow with everything else. Basically, I, the things on the side will get enough sun. We'll just create little nests and kind of clean it up a little bit. Make room for the things that I want to grow here. And we'll see if they can all grow together because, oh, it just makes me so sad to take down this hairy vetch when it's in full bloom and doing so well. In fact, I already put out my beans around my teepee. I just kind of threw them out around the hairy vetch and kind of thinking that my beans, my climbing beans, it might help the beans to climb up the teepee with the hairy vetch being there because sometimes it has a little bit of a hard time climbing at first. Oh, I think this is my biggest one right here. So we'll be harvesting those soon. This is all of my Austrian winter peas. Soon these will start putting out delicate little pretty white flowers and we'll start getting peas. And they taste very much similar to sugar snap peas. But what I like about the Austrian winter pea is that it can handle very cold weather. We even had about a week of the weather being in the teens. Survived that just fine. And then in the springtime, it really starts taking off like this and we'll get some delicious peas. Oh good, it's starting to bloom over here too. Hey, I've got more violas and some radishes. In fact, I've been harvesting them quite a bit. I made a stir fry a few nights ago and it was delicious. I really love the flavor of these radishes. This was the rainbow variety. This is something bolting here. I'm not sure. The flower is very similar to that of the arugula, but it's not a radish. In fact, I looked at it. It's white. I feel like I did throw out some parsnip seed. I kind of wonder if that's what this is. And I do plan on collecting seeds from all the ones that have done well. Oh, there's a butterfly. How pretty. Oh, I wish I had my other camera. I keep trying to catch her, but she's so fast. See, she's already moving. She's been flying around for the past few days and I keep trying to hit her with my other camera so I can get you a better look. But I'm telling you, the pollinators are out. So busy. This is some rutabaga bolting here. So I will collect seeds from this as well. Honeybees are loving it. Aren't you guys? You're so cute and you're so busy. I kind of want to just... I want to pick them up, you know? <laughs> Probably not a good idea, but they're so cute. Check this out. So I have this particular variety of cabbage here growing. Let me see here. Some of these were already really heading up, but apparently not enough. 
because they're starting to bolt. I'll be collecting seeds from this variety as well. I liked this one. It did really well throughout the cold, cold weather. It didn't get damaged or anything. I have some, some brassicas that didn't like it so much. So the ones that did well, I'm collecting seeds from those. Look at this red sail though. This is such a delicious lettuce. Be time for me to make some salad. But it has a lovely flavor, a delicate, buttery texture to it. Mm, that is good. Don't harass the chickens, Marl. <laughs> Had a little bit of pollen on it, too. <laughs> I love how the violas really start filling in right now, and they'll continue to do so until we get into the hot, hot months. August. August usually is when they start dying off. This is a little bit of hen bit right here, which is also edible. Chickens like it. You want some hen bit? <laughs> I have a couple Swiss chards that are finally doing something. See here. This was the rainbow Swiss chard that I wanted to try and I wanted to put in the garden for extra color, but I started them too late in the season. I've learned so much for in my area. I'm up in North Georgia, which is used to be 8A and now I guess I'm considered 8B. I don't know. <laughs> Do you hear the hawk? Y'all, I'm getting a little distracted here. I'll, I'll get back to this, but I got footage of the hawk sitting on their nest. So I know exactly where their nest is. It's right over on the side of our driveway up in a dead pine tree. I'm not quite sure where they, why they put it right there because we drive by several times each day and walk down to check the mail, but I guess we must not be bothering them. But my kids are playing by the creek. But y'all, it was so neat. I got to see it and I'm pretty sure it was the male because the female is much larger than the male. And he flew onto his nest and just kind of toughen up his feathers and cleaning himself off a little bit. And then he kind of slowly, gently laid down on his eggs. It was so neat, y'all. And I've been watching them come by. I can see them fly by with like some type of rodent. And I'm not sure if, they... I wouldn't think that the babies are hatched yet, but I'm hoping to get more footage for y'all. Oh, and it's so neat, you guys. I seriously, can't get enough of watching wildlife. It's just so beautiful and just a miracle. Anyway, back to this Swiss chard and my garden. I found that the best time for me is to start all of my heading up vegetables, like my broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, in August in containers. They need more time. Everything else that I want to plant, my collard greens, carrots, Swiss chard, they can be directly sown in, for me, it would be September when the weather just starts to back off finally and is not so hot. So late September and I can put those seeds out and they do just fine that way. But it really needs to be for September for me. It really needs to be when it's just starting to cool off. If I wait longer than that, to where the weather's just cold. And if I want to start cold weather plants at that time, they really don't do as well. So with the Swiss char, I started them too late. I started them when it was already cold and they didn't like that. There's a cute little thing that's a chickadee. They like to come and perch on these panels. That's the female. If I'm not sure if y'all can hear. The female hawk is much more vocal, high trigo, than the male hawk. But 
my butterfly she's still going around she's so pretty let me show y'all okay let's go to the greenhouse and i'm going to show you a few new things that bird just flew down he just grabbed something probably a, a bug we did a few changes in the garden that i'm excited to show you but i want to show you all the greenhouse first are you coming too trigo by the way <laughs> the hens the turkey hens are all laying Nathan built some nice laying boxes for them. And they've been going in there and laying all their eggs. They seem to prefer this one over here that's kind of nestled in the trees, you see. Don't worry, they don't mind me in here. Rico, you came in there too. I didn't see you, come on. My little lizard friend, he just ran by. What are you doing? What are you up to? <laughs> this is Jerry, by the way. To hang out in the greenhouse. He's my little buddy. He helps eat the pests. Okay, Trigo, come on. Let's go out. Come on. Come on. But we've been having some raccoons coming in at night and stealing the eggs, so we need to shut Nathan did this, which is nice. So when I come and check on the greenhouse at night and kind of shut things down for the evening, these laying boxes have a door in front. And he wanted to make it easy for me so I don't have to go into the turkey run and get, you know, turkey poo all over my feet. So, by the way, he made these laying boxes just out of piles of wood and junk that we have around here. So if you see this here, I can pull this, and now the door's shut. And then just hangs down, you see? So if you come around, you can see that now the door is shut and no coons can get there and steal the eggs. But really, right now, y'all, the... they're not mating. There's no action going on yet. So these aren't fertilized. We have been taking them and I had my first turkey egg and oh my gosh it's delicious it's way better than chicken eggs I feel like it has a richer buttery flavor to it Ouch. <laughs> a different smell and they're so good so I think we'll be doing some more turkey eggs until of course they start actually breeding which is funny you guys <laughs> last year I had no idea what it looked like when turkeys mate so we got Mr. Tom Selleck over here. He's our biggest Tom. Mating with one of the hens and I thought, I don't think he knows what he's doing. And I was thinking about changing his name because I can't have a turkey with the name Tom Selleck if he doesn't know how to mate. Well, I, I, I Googled it and I looked it up and sure enough, he was doing, he knew what he was doing. I just had never seen it before that the turkeys actually get on the hen's back, like fully on top of them. And I was a little concerned for the hens. I'm like, gosh, that's, that doesn't look very comfortable. <laughs> but apparently that's their process, so it's all right. We'll just have to wait. And so far, Tom Selleck and our other Tom, Tom Riddle, are getting along. But we'll see. I do have a place to put Tom Riddle, just in case. We have a little place to quarantine turkeys or hens if we need to. Okay, let's go to the greenhouse. <laughs> He's so underfoot. It's warm in here. What is it? I don't need the heat lamp on, that's for sure. It's about 90. Turn this off. But check out these tomatoes. Look at how tall they are. Look at this. So these ones I just recently put in bigger pots. So they'll start getting bigger. If I need to, I'll eventually put them in this size here and this is gonna have to be the last size that they're in from here i'll just make sure they're getting fertilized well but we're so close you guys i'm gonna be putting these out the first second week in april my last frost date here is april 4th and we're not gonna get any frost as far as the 
like what I can see in the forecast is going to be pretty warm at night. It's in the 50s. In fact, we're going to be pushing 80 degree weather next week. But look, my tobacco! This particular one right here is all from the seeds that I collected from my garden. These ones are the ones that I bought from Victory Seed. They've been getting kind of picked on. I've been having issues with those little red aphids, y'all. When I recently just put them in new pots here. See, I ordered these larger pots. They're over three inches from Bootstrap just recently. Sadly, they were out of pink, y'all, so I, I had to get purple, which is fine. Purple works too. So I just recently put these guys in bigger pots, and these will probably be the pots that they're gonna stay in. But when I was repotting them all, I just kind of made sure to pick off any aphids that I saw. These little aphids, you guys, they just like to suck the life out of your plant. Suck the essence out. They're like little skexies from the movie Dark Crystal. <laughs> but this is, this is an eggplant. And these guys are looking good as well. I've been having some aphids on them, but not much. For the most part, they love that tobacco. And they've been going out of... Oh, oh sorry. They've been going after the basil a little bit too. This is all the basil that survived the attack from the rat. They're looking great. This is the Emerald Towers. Very excited about this. It smells so good. Gosh, you guys. What is it about basil? I could just have it on my nose. I just smell it all day. All right, everything's looking good in here. They look happy. I just recently watered them. Trigo. Are you going to stay? Trigo. You're going to get hot in here. Come on. Come with me. Oh, it's cooler out here. It's so close. We're so close to be putting these out. And they're going to take off, you guys. My tomatoes are so much bigger this year than last year. By, by a lot. So for me, starting my tomato seeds under heat lamps in January works great. Also, I decided I'm gonna be starting my tobacco, eggplants, peppers, basil. What were the other ones? Tomatillos in December. I decided I'm gonna start them about a month before I start my tomatoes because they just take longer. They grow slower. So, and I want to make sure they're just as big as my tomatoes when I put them out. So this December of 2024, I'll be starting those in the house under a heat lamp. Hi. I know, I know. He is my little garden friend. He's so cute. The lady that I, I got him from when I picked him up she said his nickname is Babyface. So we still do call him Babyface. He's just so cuddly and sweet. What was it? Oh, yes, I needed to show y'all this. Well, I didn't need to, I wanted to. Okay, check this out. Oh, here's the, the big main arch here. You see how the hairy vetch is growing up? Isn't this fun? But here, look, see these arches? They were not here before. Nathan took out this panel right here and took out this section of panel before this used to be shut up. And we really wanted to open the garden up and to give it more of a flow that we can move around easier. And Nathan had this idea. He has the best ideas <laughs> of creating these arches because who doesn't love arches full of plants? It makes your garden look so magical. But, yes. So I'm gonna have to remove this soil here. We'll have to transplant these vials elsewhere. And we'll dig this up here. And we'll have a nice path through here. Isn't that gonna be so pretty? Oh, and this too. This is new. Just one little panel here. That when you walk into the garden, you open the doors, it's got these beautiful arches unclosed on each side with the panels. 
and at the far end, got that wall. I just want to kind of, I want to feel like when I walk through my garden that I, it's a little bit like I'm walking through a labyrinth. It just makes it more exciting. Thing. One last thing that he did. Ah, here as well, another panel. These used to have panels shaped like a horseshoe. And we did that last year, it was fun, but we decided it kind of made us feel a little claustrophobic right here. The moving around felt restricted. And here, we're gonna put a nice table. That way the kids can come out here and do their schoolwork. I can just sit out here and have a glass of wine, just relax and enjoy the garden. So that's gonna be awesome. And then here, the panel that used to be here is now here. This gate goes out to some pasture where we used to have some goats that were that we were taking care of for a friend, but we will hopefully soon have our own goats or sheep. Ideally, I want sheep, but honestly, finding anybody that has sheep around here, milking sheep has not been easy. Goats are pretty easy to get a hold of out here, so we might have to start with goats. We'll see. Yes. Yeah. Check this out. Isn't that so cool? I think my loofahs are gonna go right here. And from there, the loofahs can kind of climb all the way through the chicken run, giving us a lovely green wall, a lovely green food wall. Oh, by the way, you guys, so the hawk, again, this was the male. He's much smaller than the female. Still haven't had success at getting her on camera. I'm working on it. I get really excited grab my tripod, I come running around, and by the time I get to where I need to be to get a shot, you know, they fly away. They can be tough, but the hawk was perched over here on this tree and then flew across, which always freaks out my chickens and my turkeys, and just flew and perched over here on this tree. And I got my camera out on the porch so I could just zoom in and just look at him. Sadly, there was a branch that was right in front of his face. <laughs> what is it thinking? There's no chickens on that side. I'm waiting for us to leave and then go sleep and eat chicken. No. Chicken dinner tonight. Chicken dinner. <laughs> like, gosh darn it. But it was still neat to watch him. And it was interesting because you could hear all of a sudden the female off in the distance calling to him. And immediately he got up and flew away to go find her. And I thought that was so neat. These hawks had a nest on our property here last year. And from my understanding, red-tailed hawks breed for life unless of course something happens. And they, have, and they also take turns at sitting on the nest and things. So it's, it's really neat. It's just that I've had so much fun watching their little springtime life out here. And I can't wait for those little babies to hatch because I think that where I put my camera, I'll be able to zoom enough and we'll be able to see those little babies without, of course, disturbing them, although they don't seem to mind us being here. Okay, y'all, as much as I want to stay out here all day, and I do sometimes, I need to go... I need to put laundry away. That is not my favorite. I'm really bad at procrastinating it, but I do need to do it, especially on a day like this. Who wants to do laundry? <laughs> Okay, y'all, I'm happy that I finally got to share this with you. I've been coming out, I come out here several times a day just to enjoy the garden. And and I've, wanted, I've been wanting to do a video for you guys so that you could see it too. Although I don't feel like the camera does it justice. I wish y'all could actually be here with me and experience, and experience it physically. <laughs> Tadigo, you wanna come keep me company? I hope y'all are doing well. Take care and we'll see you next time.